Yeah, well, after that very tough just the facts, let's talk some more cricket on the Sportsmax Zone. Round three of the West Indies Championship bowled off today with four matches in three countries. Let's start our day one recap at Sabina Park, where Jamaica Scorpions are taking on Barbados Pride. Gerard Morrisili is live on location. Let's join him. Thank you so much, Ricardo. Yes, let me start with the position of the game. Uh, Jamaica Scorpions, they have a slight lead ahead of the Barbados Pride team. They have a 249 run, 44 run lead ahead of Barbados. Uh, batting first, Jamaica Scorpions, they would have been dismissed for 269. And uh, Barbados Pride at the close of play were 15 without loss. Uh, the standout so far for this game, Romain Morris, the wicketkeeper batsman, scoring 97 not out. Kirk McKenzie and Carlos Brown, 40 each and a Jamel Warkand though he was good with the ball for the for the Bajans five for sixty two. Uh, just before I put this game into context though, I must say Ricardo and Sir Lance that this is a game a fixture that is very much close to my heart. Seeing Jamaica and Barbados play against each other all the time is really good for me. Uh, it was my first game at the regional first class level and it is a little bit disheartening to see though that First class cricket has come to this this point where we hardly have any fans in the crowd because I remember the first time I saw them at Wingward Cricket Ground in Barbados, it was a, a full house. But it's a little bit uh, disheartening now to see that things have gotten this bad and we need to do some work about it. But without further ado, let me give you a little bit of context into the game. Jamaica, they were put into ba by Barbados Pride. In the first couple hours, it was, a f it was obvious that they just wanted to survive until lunch. They were scoring at about a, a run and a half and over up until lunchtime, and then after that, Barbados, who got one wicket in the lunch break, then pretty much took control in the first hour post the lunch, post lunch session. And uh, yeah, they got four wickets, leaving Jamaica at about 130 for five uh, within the first hour after the lunch break. But then Romain Morris, with his half century, very close to a, 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 a century here, just falling three runs short because he was dropped on in the 30s by. Shane Mosey was a really easy catch, uh, one that you couldn't imagine a player of Shane Mosey's caliber dropping, but Romain Morris made full use of that and he got all the way to 97, losing a few partners in the end, uh, but Jamel Warkan, he was a bit uh, of the stalemate between the two teams. It was a very level day at first, it started with Jamaica on top, they were 92 for two at lunch and then the, the Bajans, they took control post lunch up until T. Uh, where the score had shifted in the favor of Barbados. Of course, they would have liked to stay on top, but then that in is Romain Morris. He was instrumental. It was a very flat batting service, not too hard to bat on, not too difficult for the bowlers either, uh, pretty much neutral. Uh, but yeah, the conditions here were really good. It wasn't too hot. We have another cold front on the, on the island, so there wasn't really much for the batsmen to, to contend with in terms of the elements. So yeah, it was really good on both sides of the day. And yeah, there, there was a, a pocket of crowd here, not enough, but they were very much cheering on Romain Morris and the Jamaica Scorpions team, who is with me now. Romain, 97 not out. Of course, he would have been a little bit disappointed that OJ Shields could not stay on with you uh, to bat. Uh, it was so, until you got to that 100, but you must be satisfied with the innings. Yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied. You know, um, this is my highest first class score, you know, so I'm really elated and disappointed at the moment. But I mean, it's, a, it's all a process, so I just can build on this from here. Yeah, 15 without loss now. Um, well, first, before we get there and you get your, your outlook, just talk to me about your construction of the innings. You were a little bit conservative at the start of your innings, but then a banter between you and Rashawn Primus, you just fully switched on gears. What did he say to you and did that push you to go all the way out? Well, um, what he said to me didn't really bother me, but you know, I like the banter, um, it's a part of the game, you know, so that kind of gave me that extra motivation and, and that extra boots, you know, so that just kind of build my confidence somewhat and I just tend to build on that and I got 97 today, but unfortunately I didn't get the 100, but as I said earlier, it's a process and I just can't build on this from here. Yeah, 15 without loss now, Barbados Pride. Uh, you're in the field now, of course, you're behind the stumps. You have a, the best view of all. Uh, do you see this Jamaica Scorpions team allowing Barbados to be scheduled out and then go forward and carry a big lead over to the second innings? Um, I mean, it's a decent cricket wicket, you know. What you put in there, you're going to get out. If you spend some time on the, at the wicket, you'll get, you get scores. So I think um, it's, it's neutral right now. So I just think tomorrow we can come and be disciplined and get the ball in the right areas and hopefully we can get a good start with the new ball. Right, thank you so much, Romain, and well played to you again. 
Thanks, man. Yeah. So we did try to get an interview with one of the Barbados Pride players, of especially Jamel Warikan. Warikan uh, coming off of the physio bed, and uh, yeah, so he was not able to join us. Uh, and uh, yeah. So at the, actually, we can get Warikan now. Warikan is going to join us. Just bear with me a little bit, viewers, and Ricardo and Sir Lance. Uh, Jamel had to get a bit of rest before he came to speak to us. Jamel, that uh, was a really good bowling performance from you. Uh, are you satisfied with what your output here today? I was satisfied with my work. Um, we wanted to restrict the guys uh, le a less total, but unfortunately, we didn't do the job. But me personally, I'm happy with my performance. So hopefully tomorrow now the guys will go back and put a big total on the board. Yeah, you have another five wicket haul in this series. I think it was your third, uh, your second. second. And uh, yeah, you must be really happy that the spinners are dominating, especially your bowling performances. Yeah, that's the plan to um, perform well for the team and help Boris do well. So me getting to bat about five is a plus for me. So I just want to continue moving forward and continue performing well. Yeah, uh, 15 without loss. You said you want to put a big score on the t on the on the scoreboard. Um, do you think you have the batsmen that can do it? And who are you really hoping can fire for you? Um, I think everyone has an important role to play, and I think we do have the capability in the dressing room to do it. So it can be a collective effort, a team effort. So when we come tomorrow, everybody come together and put a good uh, score on the board. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you very much. Yeah, so that was Jamal Warikan there. So we have to watch this game very closely. Barbados Pride, Jamaica Scorpions, a fixture that is always full of, 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 of vigor, a lot of pride as well. Uh, yeah, pun on that word again. Yeah, yeah, there, there is, though, historically, always a collapse in the second innings by one of these two teams. What we have to do is decide and see, well, wait and watch and see who will be that team to the collapse. So, yeah, at the close of play here, Jamaica Scorpions, 269 in their first innings. Barbados Pride, 15 without loss. That's how it ended here at Sabina Park on day one, round three of the West Indies Championship. Yeah, thanks very much, Gerard. Uh, top four, the Jamaican left-hander Romain Morris, the second half century of the tournament, but 97 when the <laughs> Scorpions were bowled out. Warwick and five for 60 to another excellent performance coming from him. All right, let's head to Chedwin Park then, and this is where the combined campuses and colleges are taking on the Windward Islands Volcanoes. Only just over 70 overs possible in this match, 71.3 on day one because of a late start. Damp areas to the outfield causing that, not for the first time in this regional four-day championship that has happened at Chedwin Park, but the combined campuses and colleges bowled out for 204 at the close of play. Demaria Richard stopped scoring with 46 and there was also 43 uh, for Damel Evelyn. Um, so yeah, 204 all out and Cyrus taking 6 for 72 uh, for the Windward Islands Volcano. So the Volcanoes looking to continue their impressive start to the tournament. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes, they are taking on the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. The Red Force bowled out for 137, banning first. And uh, Jid Gouli top scoring with 30. So real disappointment that for the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. Jeremiah Lewis taking 3 for 38. Kevin Archibald 3 for 28. The pick of the bowlers and Rakeem Cornwall chipped in as well with uh, two for five and then at the close of play the Leeward Islands Hurricanes getting to 105 for one. Mikhail Lewis who we spoke to on this show yesterday out for 32 but Kyron Powell on 54 one of those test immortals for the West Indies by the way we got no question on that one today unfortunately he's not out 54 with Casey Carty on 11 so the Leeward Islands Hurricanes very much in control of that encounter and then the other match that's taking place the Guyana Harpy Eagles against the West Indies Academy the defending champions Harpy Eagles finding themselves in a spot of bother at the moment 175 all out for the Harpy Eagles Ronaldo Mohammed um, 30 not out the top scorer in this one Matthew Nandu getting 28 and then yeah Joshua James 5 for 43 and Johan Lane 2 for 27 the pick of the bowlers for the Eagles and the West Indies Academy in their reply 96 for 4 Kevin Sinclair taking all four wickets for the Harpy Eagles 4 for 32 Rashawn Worrell unbeaten on 34 with Joshua Bishop 
on 33 and uh, yeah they will be looking to push on on day number two because at this stage they trail by 79 runs at the close of day number one so yeah that is it for our regional four day roundup for day one of round three another massive disappointment the big west indies names not getting runs and yeah it's those who are fighting to get into the side who are putting up the big numbers we'll be back with more on the sports Mike zone we'll close it out with interactive.